Let's first up there, let's talk about the latest, well, this insane wokeness. Ellen, Helen Joyce joins us. She's the author of Trans When Ideology Meets Reality. She's also Director of Advocacy at Sex Matters. Good morning to you, Helen. Hi, Julia. Oh, where do we start, Helen? <laughs> just where do Every we start? Every day a new one. I mean, I mean I'm just mad. The world is mad. Um, two stories I want to get to. One is the Liberal Democrats have decided to have a, a debate and a vote on a motion at their party conference next month where they're going to vote on whether menstruation is not just a women's issue. Now, I think we can all agree... Husbands, husbands and boyfriends listening right now, you're probably aware that in lots of ways periods do affect you as well, am I right? Um, but I mean, what, what, what is the point of this debate? It's actually a debate about whether we should give out free period products, um, and but they've decided to do a little bit of woke signalling up front by saying this is not just a women's issue because we must be aware that some trans and non-binary people also menstruate. Indeed, the women do. Uh, yeah, as you say, it's a men's issue to the extent that we send them off to get the chocolate and, you know, fill the hot water bottle and such like. No, mostly uh, shouting, I find. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't even agree with the policy because I just think that, uh, you know, if people are poor, then you have to give them some money. You don't give people particular products. It's a recipe for waste and it's a recipe for the producers getting in there and, you know, charging extra prices and trying to get a brand name into toilets yeah. where people will just mess them around. It's a stupid policy anyway. But then sticking on top of it, this nonsense about how men can menstruate too. No, yeah. they can't. Don't I've, I've had an Ofcom complaint about can. that when I explained that actually it was only women that menstruate, women and girls, and I had an Ofcom complaint about it. I won it, of course, but I mean, there was I still have to waste my time dealing with that nonsense. Again, if that's what if that's the stuff they're debating when we are having people struggling, the cost of living, the migrant crisis, NHS in crisis, I mean, everything going on. I mean, frankly, it's just laughable. Let's talk about... It's silly season. It's exactly. silly season instead of conference well, well, season. Well, let's talk about something that's definitely not laughable. And, and these are uh, uh, parents, uh, Will and Maria Taylor, who have removed their daughter from a preschool where she was given a children's book about pride, A, why? Uh, B, why does it feature men in bondage gear? She's a you know, four-year-old in preschool being given a book about pride. I, I'm not entirely sure that's even coming up. But it's a book, we've got some images of it, called Grandad's Pride. Uh, and it's aimed at children. One of the images shows partially naked men in leather bondage gear. Clearly sexualized images, totally inappropriate, nothing to do with anyone being trans or gay or anything like that, just totally inappropriate images it, it, for, for children to see. Um, and yet the, the, the nursery, when they confronted them, defended these images. It's this reflex, isn't it, to think that anyone who complains about anything to do with being gay or being trans must be a bigot yep. rather than actually listening to what they're saying. Yep. And the other thing that annoys me about books like this is I regard them actually as homophobic because they're suggesting that gay people are perverts who want to dress inappropriately in public in front of children. Yes. And to the extent that they do, will they please stop? But straight people, of course, can do that too. Exactly. I really hate this association of public exhibitionism with, with sexual um, orientation. Yeah, this, these are completely different things, exactly. But also, this couple, they pointed out they've actually, you know, they've gone to Pride events, you know. They, 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 again, they shouldn't have to justify their views. It, it, this is the exactly. thing. It is just so inappropriate. Um, and and the, the school, they defended it. Now, it is the case that the, the, the owners of this school have now removed this book. But this book, this book is available in children's libraries. This, this book is aimed at children. It is clearly sexualized imagery aimed at preschool children. Whoever thinks that's appropriate, I don't want anywhere near any children. And they'll have done safeguarding training because everybody working in nurseries does. Uh, so I just don't understand how the staff reacted the way they did. It's an obvious safeguarding risk. Mm. It is grooming. It is exposing children to sexualised imagery that makes it harder, in fact, to tell if a child has actually yeah. been sexually assaulted because yeah. they've been sexualised then. OK, indeed. Well, look, Genesis Preschool has been contacted for comment, but it, it is the case that they, they, the owners of that school have actually withdrawn that book. Helen Joyce, always so good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Indiana.